got something that might interest you. <laughs> It's finally here. The highly anticipated Mami Issue Simulator, also known as Resident Evil Village. As some of you may know, this is a direct sequel to Resident Evil 7. And Capcom did us a nice favor of leaving a previously on Resident Evil type of video, just to catch up with the story. The game starts off with you being the father of a ginger baby and having a passive aggressive wife. We moved here so that she wouldn't have to deal with any of that, remember? There's nothing wrong with my memory. But I'm not paranoid. I'm just cautious. Then, go cautiously take your daughter to bed. Proving once again that Capcom devs are truly the masters of horror. After a brief intro where you find out Chris retired from working as a boulder smasher, you start off with a now pretty much standard Capcom walking simulator before you get to the good stuff. Visually, the game is stunning. The footage you see here isn't maxed out quality, but it's pretty close, which if you look at the FPS counter, you can tell the game is well optimized, seeing as it's running on a 1070, which is a mid-range card that's 5 years old at this point. The game kind of looks like what you would expect from an RE4 remake to look like. There's a rundown village, a castle, and some premium vampires to molest you. The atmosphere of the game is fantastic. The main area, which is of course the village, was truly a joy to explore. They really nailed the whole run-down, slaughtered, depressing Eastern European village look. Which, you know, I should know, I grew up near them. Although, it's not without its faults. The level design is also amazing, both in terms of visual design and gameplay. Thanks to the Quixel Mega Scans, Capcom was able to design a village with very little repetitive content, creating a feeling that the village is actually organic rather than just another generic level. Same can be said for Castle Dimitrescu. It truly looks like a lot of thought went into the architecture of the castle. It looks like a place where someone lives rather than just being another government issue over the top vampire castle. There's also plenty of areas to explore in each section of the game, where you can find hidden secrets, treasures and pieces of lore. The map also feels open. It doesn't constrict your movement. You don't feel like you're sitting on a rail going from A to B merely collecting keys so you could progress. The levels are also designed with a high degree of interconnectivity, giving the player options on how to deal with enemies and move about. There's also a lot of backtracking involved if you're willing to go the extra mile for more equipment. The game kind of teases you kind of early on by showing you doors with strange symbols on them, which if you're anything like me will bug you the whole time you're playing, just counting the number of doors you're not able to open only to gain access to them hours later into the game, which will give you a much needed respite before you continue with your journey. It bears mentioning that one area kind of dips in quality compared to the rest of the game, and that's the factory. Although by now it's kind of standard Resident Evil practice to end the game with a secret lab, factory or some other kind of industrial area, this level kind of stood out, visually, thematically, the story here is complete bonkers. Don't get me wrong, it looks fantastic, the atmosphere is still there, the enemies were creative, but overall it felt like a giant iron maze that sort of artificially padded the game's runtime. I've lost a couple of extra hours here just wandering through this level. I didn't like the factory in RE4 and I don't like it here. If you didn't mind the factory in RE4, then you actually might love this area as well. It's just not my cup of tea. 
I'll stick to my gothic castle and its occupants. Much praise can be given to the character design. Each of the four lords in the game are unique and memorable, starting with Mommy Milkers herself, Lady Dimitrescu. Her presence, demeanor and her three daughters left me with a lasting impression, justifying their use in the promo material for the game. She is literally unstoppable, much like Mr. X was in RE2, which gives you an immediate sense of dread as soon as she shows up. There's also Donna Beneviento, a mutant puppet master, Moreau, which is kind of a Quasimodo type character, and Heisenberg. Kind of a mixture of Van Helsing and Magneto. Although this guy doesn't sell any meth, with a hammer like that, you know he's the one who knocks. <sighs> yeah, I, I, I get it. It's a 10 year old meme. Give me a break. Did I really have a choice here? You know. Anyway. Each main antagonist of the game, while sharing the same general goal, also have their own secondary agendas and character flaws, which give them far more depth than the standard government issue mustache twirling villain. I don't want to spoil the game for any would-be players, but I can tell you that the story is great, and some moments left a lasting impression on me that will no doubt manifest themselves as nightmares down the line. All in all, it has all the elements you want out of a Resident Evil game. Monsters, mutations, conspiracy, fun puzzles, interesting bosses and over-the-top villains. But it's also a solid story about a father looking for his daughter, but seeing as she's a ginger, he probably would have been better off just cutting his losses and making a new one. But I digress. Gameplay-wise, Capcom really delivered this time, while also tying the improved combat system right into the story. In RE7, Ethan was just an average guy, but by the time of RE8, Ethan received military training from Captain Biceps himself. They kept the tried and tested quick switch mechanic for weapons from the recent Resident Evil games, along with the beloved inventory system of RE4 although they managed to somehow mess it up slightly. Unlike in RE4, you can't swap items while rearranging your inventory. This is either a bug or a huge oversight on the dev side. Another product of Ethan's training is that he can now push enemies away if the player times the block button with an enemy's attack. They also took a good page out of Mirror's Edge's game design, coloring things that the player can interact with. Overall, the combat mechanics are pretty smooth. All the enemies in the game are well designed, both visually and in terms of lore. The game has a lot of different enemies, something which lacked severely in RE4. The enemies you encounter reflect the environment you find them in. They don't seem out of place as they sometimes did in RE4. Also, some enemies change appearance or function depending on the environment. Lycans come in all sorts of forms, some just chase you around, others use basic weapons like machetes, while some use bows and arrows to hit you from a distance. Also, none of the enemies drop ammo for you, which was a good design choice for both immersion and gameplay. Good for immersion because you wouldn't expect villagers to carry around bullets and grenades. The game isn't uh, set in Afghanistan after all. They will only drop coins or artifacts which you can trade for coins. As for gameplay, this means you'll always be low on bullets, which is kind of what you want out of a survival horror game. The series adaptive difficulty also makes a return, which basically means the game adapts to how well you're doing in the game. Trying to hoard ammo and health potions? Enemies turn into bullet sponges. Got molested in your last encounter? Well, here's some ammo and a healing potion. I've heard some people complaining about the low field of view, but in my opinion it works in favor of the game. The low FOV creates a claustrophobic feeling, increasing paranoia and making you turn around more often. This is a horror game, not Quake. The low FOV is appropriate. Although they said the game would feature hunting animals for resources, well, they didn't outright lie, they did kind of embellish this feature. Well, yes, you will encounter animals in the game that you can kill for meat. It 
it's not as open worldy as you might think. It's more of a... You have a set of places where animals spawn once. They don't respawn as far as I've seen in my playthrough. And the amount of animals is quite limited. It's, it's still a vast improvement over the silly egg collecting from Resident Evil 4, since you can use the meat from the animals to gain permanent character upgrades, similar to RE4's Yellow Herb. The game also features the merchant, much like the one in RE4, although greatly improved, both in terms of lore and gameplay. Just like in RE4, he sells you equipment and upgrades your guns, with the addition of also selling you ammo, which, as previously stated, is very scarce. Another addition here is that he also makes food for you. He makes different recipes based on what meat you bring him, which give you permanent character upgrades like boosted health, improved blocking or increased movement speed. He's also more involved in the story than the merchant in RE4 was. You interact with him in key moments of the game rather than just being some fourth wall breaking character. I very much like the addition of a merchant type character in Resident Evil, as it gives the player a massive incentive to explore the game thoroughly, hunting down the last piece of treasure so you could afford more weapons and upgrades. The long lost mercenaries mode makes a comeback, and it's a fun little mini game as a cherry on top for finishing the game. In terms of length, the game took me about 11 hours to complete, with a decent emphasis on exploration, but even so, I missed some things here and there. As with all Resident Evil games, you get a ton of replayability through the new Game Plus feature and unlocking new weapons and upgrades, so there's plenty of fun to be had even once you finish the game. And if you're feeling particularly masochistic, there's always Village of Shadows difficulty, which, believe me, will make you cry even with the unlockable weapons. All in all, if you're a completionist, I reckon there's easily over 20 hours of gameplay to be found here. Overall, this definitely earns a spot as one of the best RE titles to date. I've mentioned some of the negatives, of course nothing is flawless. Sometimes the game does drag on in certain places, but it's never enough to actually justify disliking the game. Capcom learned from their mistakes with RE7 and delivered a memorable experience that has left me eagerly waiting for the next installment of the game, be it a sequel or just another remake. If you need this game summed up in a single sentence, well, a good deal, if I say so myself. Thanks to everyone for watching. If you made it this far, I really hope you liked the video. If you did, drop a like and consider subscribing for more gaming content. And I hope to see you in the next one.